Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to call to order the uh, Board of Zoning Appeals hearing at 7 p.m. on Tuesday, June 6th. Just some uh, general information for those of you who have not appeared before the Board of Zoning Appeals. Your petition will be read by a member of the panel. Uh, you'll be asked to come forward and either you or your representative um, explain your petition, after which time we'll ask if there's anyone in the audience who wishes to speak in favor. Then we'll go to anyone in the audience who wishes to speak against. Uh, there may be questions from the panel at any point in time. I would ask that if you have a cell phone, please either turn it off or put it on silent so that the speakers are not interrupted. With that, I will ask Commissioner Llewellyn to read the first petition into the record, 2890 Broadbridge Ave. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, everyone. Our first petition tonight, item number one, is 2890 Broadbridge Avenue. The petition of Vincent and Nadia Glorioso seeking a site plan review and variance of section 4.2 of the side setback requirements from 12 feet to 7.8 feet. The overall lot coverage of 20% to 31% and section 4.1.6.14C1 of the accessory apartment regulations for an addition for an in-law apartment incidental to a single family dwelling. The stated hardship is apartment to be used for a disabled family member and there's no basement or attic storage within this dwelling. Okay, is the petitioner and or their representative present? Please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Hello, how are you? Uh, Nadia Glorioso, 2890 Broadbridge Avenue, Stratford, Connecticut. Hi. And your questions, or did you? Need well, to tell us what you're proposing. Okay, uh, so my mother passed in March, um, and she uh, took care of my brother the whole time. He's 66 years old. He is legally disabled, and he has lived with nobody else or by himself this whole time. I told my mother I would always take care of him, so we want to put an addition onto the house. I don't have enough room only because I also have my son and my grandson living with me, uh, which doesn't look like it's ever going to get, you know, <laughs> they're, that they're going to leave. <laughs> okay, so that's not going to happen. Uh, so I don't have any room for him. So that's why I'm asking for an addition. As I said, I live on Broadbridge Avenue. So I don't know if you're familiar with the houses there. They, uh, they're on slab and there's a crawl space for an attic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so far as storage or anything like that, we have none, okay? Uh, with kids and everything else that I have, uh, four bicycles, you know, lawnmower, everything else, you know, we, you have to put it someplace. You can't just leave it outside, you know, for it to get damaged. Uh, decorations, you know, lawn furniture, things like that. So uh, that's why I'm asking for an addition to put my brother in so we could take care of him. He lives right here in Stratford, but it's kind of annoying going back and forth, back and forth to both houses, trying to take care of two houses. And it's getting a little bit expensive also on my part, taxes, both sides. <laughs> mm. um, so I'm asking if you could please grant me this. I don't think anybody would be opposed. My neighbors are all good. I've always kept up on my property, so. Thank you. Commissioners have any questions? Oh, but also for the record, Ms. Doolin is going to be sitting in uh, in Mr. Kellerman's absence, so Ms. Doolin will be sitting in as an alternate. Thank you. Questions from the commissioners? I have a question. Sure. Um, so the addition is for your, for my who? My brother. Oh, it's for your brother. Yes, not he's 66 years old. And not the not the disabled family member. He is the disabled family. He is the disabled oh. family member. And yes. he can get up to the second floor. Excuse. Oh yes, physically he can walk. It's just mentally he can't <laughs> take care of himself. He's never lived by himself. He is legally disabled. Okay. Thank you. Have you had an opportunity to read the um, Yes, comments? I see the proposed that you want to take the, me to uh, take down the pool and uh, the tool sheds. The pool has been there since I bought the house. So. The question, Mr. Brennan, do we have, since it's, it's within the, the 10 foot setback, do we know if there was ever a Board of Zoning Appeal ruling allowing that to exist? 
Uh, I don't. I, I couldn't find any previous approvals. Um, the, the only thing I was able to tell, I did an aerial search of it dating back almost, you know, to 1934, and from what I can tell, it's been there for more than 30 years. I've lived in the house for 34 years, since 89, okay? The town of Stratford even came out and gave me a permit to put onto that deck. So it's well aware the town was, knows about the pool, that it's been there, it's grandfathered in, it's never been moved, it's never been touched, it's just the liner on the inside. And my understanding, they told me when he came out, he says, if you change 100% of the pool, then you have to move it. Otherwise, you could keep it right there where it is. You know and I do have a fence around the whole pool and a gated um, uh, staircase uh, so nobody could get into it. Do you have a fence between the property lines? Yes, I do. What type of fence is that? Wood. What's the height of the fence? Uh, it depends on where you are. Four foot all the way around the whole yard. Four foot. And around the pool, I'd say, so you can't see, you cannot see the pool visibly from the street. Mm. And it stands maybe about 10 foot. Yep. If not, you know, give or take. Okay. Um, next question. Looks uh, like you have a series of, of sheds Yes. Located along the property line in, I don't see a north, south, east, west per se, but it looks like you have four sheds along the property line which are also inside the setback. When were those sheds constructed? Uh, those have been up there since the first one we put when we first moved in in 89. Okay. And then uh, the other ones, 2000. Yeah, 2006 has been the last okay. one. So those sheds have been up there, and like I said, we have no, no uh, attic, no basement. Then the, uh, the sheds are inside the encroachment area as well. Do you know if there's been any application for zoning to allow a structure within that setback? No, I was unable to find any shed per permits or variances for them. It's not cemented in, okay. they, they could easily be taken down. But my question is, I had an addition put onto the house. Now the town of Stratford came to approve uh, my addition, the bathroom that I had put on into the back of the house, uh, if you could see that. Yeah. Now, during that time, how many inspectors have been in my backyard, have gone through that section, seen the tool sheds there, never said anything. And the other thing is, uh, anytime you came to reassess my property, which I know it's definitely two, maybe three times, and nothing was ever said to me. Right. Just for your edification, just for your for knowledge, a building department inspector is only looking at a building. They're not looking for zoning violations. Okay. Uh, same thing with a tax assessor. They're just looking for the structure and improvements on the structure. Okay. No, so I, they're not going to be sure looking exactly. for anything of that nature. Yeah, but we didn't know that, you know, you, you needed anything. Per shed, so. Yeah, okay. Any other commissioners have any questions? Okay. Um, through the chair, Dan, does um, a shed that doesn't have, uh, that's not cemented in, does that count toward uh, coverage, lot coverage? Yeah, yep. The only thing that on this site plan that you're looking at that does not count towards lot coverage is the swimming pool itself. Now that's an above ground pool, correct? Yes. When was the last, I, I'm looking at the plot plan. I'm seeing that, uh, who, let's see, who's it? Richard Plain, land surveyor. So your land was surveyed to do this? Has yes, I, um, <laughs> in for the money, um, I had to, I got a surveyor and an architect to do everything. Right. And to remove all that, then I'd have to spend more money to landscape. I mean, your proposal is to, you know, maybe put in a basement or an attic on that new addition, 
but that's going to cost me even more money. I mean, I'm $7,000 already in the hole, and I didn't even get approval yet. No, I appreciate that. It's just whenever <laughs> I see in a pot, on a plot map that uh, uh, a bent iron pin is used as a site, I just want to make sure that there's been a survey, a formal survey done on it, and that the surveyor has signed off on the fact that that is, in fact, the property. Yeah, line. okay. Any other commissioners have any questions? Not? Okay, thank you very much. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak in favor? In favor? Please come forward. State your name and address for the record, please. Good evening. My name is Martha Soto. I live in 110 Carroll Road in Stratford. Mm -hmm. uh, my backyard backs up to their backyard. Uh, not fully, but it's just the corner. We share corners. And uh, last summer, we had an extension done to our property. Uh, it was an up, it was just extended because of lack of space. <laughs> um, you know, those houses were built for very small families. Closets are super small, no basement, no, you know, uh, no just crawl space in the attic. So I understand, you know, her um, having to put all her things in sheds. Um, and uh, wanting to expand, especially for her uh, brother in this case. And I just want to say they have maintained, they maintain their yard, their house, their front yard, their backyard. Like she said, their, their pool is fenced in, uh, the entrance to the pool. And they're just good neighbors overall, and that's all I have to say. Thank you, Thank you very much for your input. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Opposition, please come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. Excuse me, my name is uh, Afif Safadi. Uh, I'm next door to them, yes, and they have a swimming pool, and they keep pumping the water in my backyard. And that's enough, you know, to build, to add something, you know, to next to me, you know. Excuse me, I thought, uh, I'm really tense, you know, uh, because of that, and I expect Nick to represent me, you know. Okay. So your objection is not to the addition, your objection is to the fact that yeah, the swimming pool is within the boundary. Okay. I disagree. Okay. Very good. Any other comments, sir? Uh, no, no. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anyone else speaking in opposition? Okay, hearing none, the chair will entertain a motion to close that petition for the public hearing. Mr. Chairman, make a motion to close public hearing on item 12890 Broadbridge Ave. Motion by Commissioner Llewellyn, second by Commissioner second. Second. Mm -hmm. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Uh, Ms. Witham, could you read number two, 546 Riverdale? <coughs> number two. To 546 Riverdale Drive, petition of Jane A. Schofield seeking a site plan review and variances of the rear setback re uh, requirement of 30 feet to 21.1 feet and the overall lot coverage requirement of 20% to 24% to construct an addition and deck incidental to a single family dwelling. The hardship being the current house is three feet closer to the rear setback than neighboring homes. Okay, thank you. Is the petitioner or their representative present? Okay, please come forward, state your name and address for the record, please. Hello, I'm Jane Schofield and I live at 546 Riverdale. Um, so thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the opportunity to be able to speak to you tonight. So as you've seen from my application, I purchased my childhood home from my parents' estate about a year and a half ago, and I'd like to put on a sunroom with a deck on the rear of that. The sunroom doesn't require any type of variance, but the deck starts to encroach on the 30-foot setback by about two feet. Um, I plan to have the deck to be about 12 feet wide and be able to have some sort of negotiation around furniture and things of that nature that you would have on the deck. There is no encroachment on the back of the property to another neighbor. Um, so there's not an issue there. Does anybody have any questions? 
Commissioners have any questions? Have you had an opportunity to review the um, zoning uh, staff comments? The letter that the zoning... Yeah, I, I read that. Okay, good. Any questions or concerns regarding no. that? Okay, very good. Questions from the commissioners? Okay, hearing none, thank you very much. All right, just one additional thing. I have sure. um, letters from my neighbors that sit to the right and left to me. Okay. I'm happy to hand this to you. Just yeah, please, we'll submit them for the record. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anyone is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak in favor of this petition? In favor? Anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to this petition? Opposition. Hearing none, the chair will entertain a motion to close the public hearing on this petition. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to close the public hearing for 546 Riverdale Drive. Motion Second by Mr. Lewon, second by Ms. Gibson. Discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Petition number three. Ms. Gibson, would you be so kind as to read 835 Huntington Road into the record? Sure. 835 Huntington Road petition of Scott Farquhar Harson see, um, seeking a site plan review and variance of section 3.3.1 of a rear setback required of 37.5 feet to 20.8 um, feet and um, section 4.1.6.14, uh, let's see, C1, uh, comma three, of the um, accessory apartment. It's a, an accessory apartment regulations for an addition for an in-law apartment incidental to single family dwelling. And the hardship is unique shaped rear lot created prior to the current rear lot re regulations. Hey, petitioner or their representative present? Okay, very good, sir. Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Uh, good evening. My name is Scott Farquharson, 743 North Sycamore Avenue, Los Angeles, California. I have some paperwork to submit. Uh, the submitted paperwork are some pictures of the property, as well as a uh, revised drawing floor plan and the uh, posting of the sign on the property. Okay. I work for the contractor, Baybrook Remodelers, who are proposing this project. I am representing Raymond and Sharon Del Rey the owner of the properties at 835 Huntington Road, Stratford. Our proposal is to construct a two-story addition. The addition will be 30 feet by 20 feet, a total of 750 square feet on each floor. The floor, first floor level will be used as an accessory apartment. The existing home is a raised ranch with three bedrooms upstairs. Uh, the main home would be used for their daughter, Jessica, and three children. The parents, Raymond and Sharon Del Rey, will be able to stay on the first level without climbing stairs and will be able to be helpful with their grandchildren. This has been Raymond and Sharon's home since 1980, and, we, and they would prefer to stay there. We are before the commission asking for a rear yard variance. This home is in an RS4 district. Section 4.2 required lot area, dimensions, and coverage calls for a 25-foot rear yard setback. The existing home 
has a 29.5 rear setback. But this is a, an interior lot, so section 3.3.1 setbacks for interior lots would increase the setback requirement to 37.5 feet. And the existing setback would be 29.5 feet. The hardship is the unique configuration of the lot and terrain and location of the existing house on the lot. It is situated on an angle to the property. Uh, when you come in from the street, um, there's a long driveway and right at that point, the house is situated and if you're looking at it, looks like plenty of room in the rear and less room on the side. But because of it become, because it's the street side, um, the rear part of it is the existing home sets over the setback line. And we are asking to allow a 20.8 foot setback for the addition. Uh, and, and that is because it is, it's also an existing non-conforming structure. Thank you for your consideration. Okay. Thank you very much. Any questions from the commissioners? Questions from the commissioners? No, thank you very much. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak in favor of this petition? Just come forward, please, and put your name and address for the record. Uh, Brian Del Rey, 835 Huntington Road. Um, I, we, the neighbor who this has impacted was not able to be here tonight, but he did write a signed letter. Okay. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor? In favor? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Opposition. Hearing then, the chair will entertain a motion to close public hearing on 835 Huntington Road. Mr. Chairman, make a motion to close public hearing on 835 Huntington Road. I'll we have a second motion, motion and a second. Discussion on the motion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. That closes. Uh, I'll need a motion to adjourn the public hearing. Mr. Chairman, motion to adjourn the public hearing. And I second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. We'll now go into the administrative session. And we will call that to order at 723. First item on the agenda is to vote on items listed at the public hearing scheduled today, which we just adjourned. Petition number one. Would anyone like to take petition number one off the table for discussion, motion? Mr. Chairman, for the purposes of discussion, I make a motion to take 2890 Broadbridge Avenue off the table. We have a motion to take 2890 uh, off the table for discussion. Do I hear a second? I'll second that. Second by Ms. Witham. Discussion on the motion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. All those in favor of taking it off the table say aye. Aye. <laughs> aye. All of a sudden there was silence. I was wondering what happened here. <laughs> <laughs> Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. We are open for business on that petition. Discussion. I guess I'm concerned about, um, you know, the pool that's been there for 30 years and the sheds and everything that's, I guess, is not permitted even though they've been there for whatever. Um, Yep. That's my concern. The, the sheds do count towards coverage. Um, and they are right up against the property line. One of the recommendations from the zoning commission, the zoning office, is that we could try to reduce the number of shorts, storage sheds, um, understanding that there's no possibility of a basement on that property or attic storage, which would be cost prohibitive. Um, maybe a consolidation of the storages from four individuals to maybe 
how many um, sheds would have to be removed to at least for lot coverage to not be an issue? I wouldn't be able to answer that because I don't know the square footage of the sheds. It's not listed on the survey. I don't think the removal of the sheds would be enough to bring it into conformity though. Yeah, I, like I say, um, I also have, I mean, I understand it's past the time of, of it, it's, the, the pool predates the zoning requirements, but the fact remains that it is right up against the property line. While it may not be cost effective to move it, the possibility would be there's a four foot fence there now, maybe if we go to a higher fence, which would also reduce the visibility of the addition from the surrounding neighbors is a possibility. Like maybe I don't know what this, I saw in another application that they had a six foot vinyl fence. So maybe we do something like a, a fence around it. I, want to, I don't want to put too much cost burdens on the petitioner, but at the same token, a four foot fence isn't necessarily getting it done either for me. Anyone else have any comments? I do know that pool has been there forever. I know the property. It's well maintained. You can't, you know, if it's if it's been there for 30 years and somebody came in and told them if they remove it, they have to then go into compliance. Right. Well, I'm I'm, I'm not okay with that, you know. But well, I'm not suggesting that they that they have the cost of having to move it. I'm just suggesting that maybe we provide a little more privacy on that side of the property line by putting in a higher fence. I thought they said it was higher. It's a four foot fence. That, I mean, yeah, okay. The, the, it's higher on the pool side. Right. Around, right. And then going, this uh, property slopes down there. So that's where the four foot section is. Going to. Yeah. That's it. So from the front. Okay. It's, it's, yeah, it's pretty hot. Damn. And on the side of the pool, uh, going into his yard, yeah. I have all the latest. Dan, fence height requirements, 10 feet's not allowed, is it? <laughs> not without a variance. I understand that, but a 10 foot fence isn't allowed. So. No, the, the maximum height without a variance is six feet. No, well, it's an eight, uh, what's the height? Six feet, no, you said it's not. Two feet away, two feet of height. It's not 10 feet, it has a decorated So with the lattice on top or not, the maximum height is six feet from, from grade to the top of the lattice. That's facing more of the jam than it was that high. Come around the side. Three quarters of the pool is that height, but then it slopes the yard. So if this way the gate is to get in and out of my yard, it's only four feet high with the gate. That's the only part. The rest of the yep. back of the yard is only four feet high. Yep. There's no way to get here. No, that's, that's not really what we're saying. What we're saying is you can't have a 10 foot high fence anywhere. Right, Any, the maximum height is six feet. Yeah, you may need it. Oh. <laughs> Just. Well, say it is he said it doesn't matter. No, 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 we're not saying that yet. We're, we're, we're just op we're open for discussion. So, I mean, all right, so now the fence is gonna be removed. Are you gonna replace the fence that's being removed? Did, while you were just describing it, were you 
talking about along the property line, there's a, a gate? Yep. The, there's no there's no gate into Mr. Safadi's property. Yes, there is a gate going. No, it's to get out because okay, when we put the gate up, it's for purposes. Okay, what if there's a fire? You can't get out to the front. You have to get out the back. Okay, for us to leave the property, if it's gated, if there's no gate, how are we supposed to get out? It's just not reasonable. But so the gate. So in order for you to get off of your property, you access his property. No, it, it, there's okay. like about a two foot section. There's my grandson Paul goes over. I'm walking here, you go in the wall. Yeah. But to walk in and out? Oh, no, this, we this never. This is not. Yeah. It's only for an emergency. I'm walking away King because I have no dirt because we put it up. So I can't even walk down anywhere. Yeah, there's no dirt there anymore. Okay. So the fence between the pool and 2918 Broadbridge Avenue is being removed. Is that my understanding? The front of the fence has to come down if we have this gate. All right, we're not talking about any fencing along Broadbridge Avenue itself. I'm the side. Right, the side between your property. Well, well, no, no I, I certainly am not suggesting that you remove the fence between property lines. What I'm suggesting is, is that an eight-foot section is a violation of the zoning requirements. Okay. What I'm suggesting is, is that if the fence is coming down, that you replace it with a six-foot fence that's within conformity that doesn't require a variance from zoning. Okay. All right, so that takes care of that aspect. As far as the sheds... Anyone else from the commission? Does anyone want to make a motion to approve the Nyer table? Oh, it's the opposite side. It's the opposite side. All right, what I would suggest is that, what I'm going to suggest is this. I suggest that Someone make a motion to approve with the condition of the removal of the existing fence and a standard six foot fence be placed in its place that is within conformity to zoning. Leave the sheds alone, leave the pool alone. So all that would be is the fence is coming down anyways, replace it with a six foot fence so that there's a demarcation between the property lines. I don't care if there's a gate between the fence or not but just replace that fence with some sort of a privacy fencing that is not eight foot tall, which is a violation of zoning. Because the fact that it's coming down is great, but you can't really have a pool between yards without a fence between it for public safety aspects of it. So that's what I would, I would, I would hope someone from the commission would make that motion. Yeah, I, I, I'll make that motion. I just want to comment real quick. Sure. Where, I, where I am on Huntington Road, there are houses next to each other. One has a pool, one doesn't. It's pretty common for them to have the gates between the two properties, as they were suggesting, right. escapability. If you have some sort of an emergency, need to get off your property, just as a secondary access 
going from one property to another. It, it does happen. I have seen conditions okay. where, where that's uh, in and existence I'm, before. Yeah, and I'm not, uh, I'm not suggesting that they don't, but I'm just suggesting that we bring that fence within the ex ex so exactly. we don't have an open violation. All right, Mr. Chairman, I can make a motion that we approve this petition with the stipulation that the removed section of fence that comes down gets replaced with a six-foot fence that is in conformance with Stratford zoning regulations. I have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Ms. Gibson. Discussion on the motion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes yes. Motion passes 5-0 with that one condition. Thank you very much for your time and patience. Uh, second petition on the agenda. Does anyone want to take that petition off the table for discussion? That's 546 Riverdale. Mr. Chairman, make a motion to take 546 Riverdale Drive off the table. I have a motion. Do I hear a second? I'll second that. Discussion on the motion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Thank you. Aye. Thank you. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. We're open for business on 534 Riverdale. Uh, excuse me, 5. 46 Riverdale. Chair will entertain any motion? Any discussion? Um, I just, I guess there is no real hardship. Um, and I, you know, can the deck be made smaller to conform to the requirements? I know the Person mentioned, you know, for furniture, et cetera, on the deck, you know, to have it be 12 feet. I don't know if it be reduced so that. Well, I guess that's a possibility. It's not a real hardship. No, it's no, no. definitely a possibility. Any other commissioners wish to uh, discuss it? No, sir. The public hearing's closed. It was only the petitioners. So that petition. Mr. Brennan will discuss that with you outside in the hallway so that you can, he'll talk to you about your options. We can continue while he's doing that. All right, so there's a concern about the fact that it's not a hardship. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, to that point, question to the, uh, the town attorney. What exactly is in Section 8-6 of the Connecticut General Statutes? What specifically do you mean? Is <laughs> well, it, it's just it's, it's cited in the, um, in the zoning administrator's report in the, uh, in the last line. I just I didn't know if that was something no. standard or... Generally, the board, specifics of it. The, the law doesn't uh, generally support hardships that are deemed self-created. Those are generally frowned upon. Thank you. That's, uh, so I would say that uh, Mr. Brennan's uh, comments in that regard are legally sound. However, he also makes the comment that the applicant's hardship claim that the house is uh, set back further than the neighboring homes is compelling. So on one hand, you're saying there's no hardship, but on the other hand, you're saying that the argument is compelling. So I guess that leads us to our interpretation. That's kind of why I was getting to sort of the specifics and seeing if there was anything in there that might have been helpful to, to guide us. And you guys are the ultimate fact finders. If you find that the house being set far back, farther back from the from the road than other houses in the neighborhood, and you deem that to be a hardship, then you're within your legal rights to to grant a variance. I drove by that house um, yesterday, 
the day before. And behind that house is like marsh or whatever. And if it is set back further, I mean, you know, that's, that's a hardship to me. <laughs> and, yep. and the neighbors don't seem to mind, so I don't personally have an issue with that. I know it's not, it, you know, self, well, it's self-created to build a deck or whatever, but I'm sure she didn't build the house three feet further back herself, you know. Right. Is, is this the property where the town itself is one of the backyard abutters? I, I know in that section of Riverdale Drive that the, the town owns certain parcels back there. Right. Possible. Okay. I don't think anything would happen back there. I mean, nothing else could happen back there. It's not like you're hitting the neighbor. Or no, yeah. no I, I agree, but it does, it, it kind of gets to the point that like the hardship piece of it's kind of compelling because not only are the backyard wetlands, but they're wetlands that are property of the town of Stratford. All right, so we've had some discussion. Does anyone want to make a motion? I wouldn't mind hearing a motion to approve. But Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve 546 Riverdale Drive. I'll second that motion. A motion and a second. Discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Chair votes yes. Motion passes 4-1. Next item on the agenda is 835 Huntington Road. Mr. Chairman, make a motion to take 835 Huntington Road off the table. Motion to take off the table by Mr. Llewellyn. Do I hear a second? I'll second that. Second by Ms. Witham. Discussion on the motion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. We're open for business on this petition. As I read the comments, it indicates that a legitimate hardship exists. Yeah, this is probably the, uh, the easiest of the three items before us this evening. So, Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion to approve 835 Huntington Road. You have a motion to approve. Do I hear a second? I'll second that. We have a second. Discussion on the motion. Hearing on all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimous 5-0. That takes care of number, item number one on our regular meeting agenda. We now move on to item number two. The chair will entertain a motion for the approval of the minutes of the May 2nd, 2023 meeting. Mr. Chairman, make a motion to approve the minutes of our May 2nd, 2023 meeting. We have a motion to approve. Do I hear a second? I'll second that. Any discussion? Any additions, corrections? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, we have no cam site reviews according to the agenda. We have no erosion and sediment control according to the agenda. Members' concerns, comment. Mr. Chairman, real quick, just wanted to make a quick comment that I'm really glad that we stayed with our 7 o'clock start time. Um, I had another meeting at 5.30 this evening, and between that traffic, weather conditions, I would not have been able to make it here for 6. Yeah. So I know it's a little bit of a later evening for all of us, but uh, it's already paying dividends. I would say the same, because today yeah, I had a meeting that went over to 5. and that made yeah, I, th I think it's a public service to the community, because people who work in the areas and, and have more than a 30 minute commute based on traffic, anything can happen. I agree with yeah, that. Yeah, so well, I mean, everyone. Uh, I don't know why other commissions aren't doing that other than for their own benefit of getting home sooner, but I, I, don't, I think it's a disservice to the public. And that's just my, my philosophy. Uh, we went through campsite and um, erosion and sediment because we had none. Okay, other items. Uh, question, when, since July 4th is a Tuesday, I assume that we are the following Tuesday or we are Wednesday? July 5th. Oh, July 5th. Okay, I know exactly where that is. Yeah, no problem. I'm around on the 5th. Anybody else have any conflict schedule-wise? As we have no control with the weather, I believe July 5th is the alternate date for the fireworks. Yes, 
Yeah, that is good. That is true too. Yeah, that, that we might be able to do that relatively quickly and be there before. Doesn't get dark till 9:30. I, I believe Mr. Town Attorney wants to weigh in. <laughs> that, now I was just going to say that uh, this this board has the authority under the Freedom of Information Act to simply hold a special meeting at a date that they would find more convenient if they don't want to do that Wednesday, for instance, because of the fireworks. If they wanted to set it down for the following Tuesday, you guys would be well within your right to do that. Well, we're not sure if we have the room. Yeah, I mean, But that's something that we could, Dan and, and the chairman could discuss. Okay, we'll discuss. Yeah. Does anyone have a conflict with the following Tuesday, just in the event that that comes up? Because I'd, I'd, I'd like to have as many of the... Is July 5th the alternate day for fireworks or is it the day alternate okay the day i believe i believe the 30th the, yeah i believe the day is the 30th i think it's the 30th. it's early this year i think no i think i'm okay okay all right so we'll play it by ear let's see what happens um we're still open for additional petitions to come in anyways right closes today so we only have one so okay i'm i'm available the fifth or the 11th let me just i don't believe i have anything scheduled Definitely don't have time off in July. How um, much time do you have to give if you wanted to cancel? Is there a time limit? Special meetings 24 hours under the Freedom of Information Act, so. We have up until before the holiday. Mm. Oh, so like that Friday before the holiday would make which sense. Which is the 30th. I mean, we'll have already. Oh. Okay. Right. I like to say, I have, I have no objection to going forward on the 5th, so. Yeah. And, and, and if it's conflicting with the fireworks, I think we can be in and out of here in less than an hour. Yeah, because it's just Parking would be a difficult aspect of it, yeah. Dan did say that's a very not application, correct? Yeah. <laughs> that is true. We have to go back to the history of property to 1639. Uh, but God bless him, he is, he is thorough. He is thorough. But sometimes Cliff Notes, Cliff Notes helps. If there's no other items, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. We have a motion to adjourn. Do I hear a second? I will second that. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Off the record at 748.